Hey folks, I'm Dan. Uh, I've got, what, 20 odd years of singer-songwriter experience. Uh, so I think I've got a few tips and tricks up my sleeve that might help you to make your next open mic appearance go swimmingly. So is that enough of an intro? So in no particular order, first up, do not apologize. Everyone does it at open mics. I don't know what it is. And it gets really tiresome when you're watching just to hear everyone kind of making these little excuses. And I get it, like, totally. We're artists, so we're, like, um, you know, very self-critical and very perfectionistic often, and we pick up on all the little flaws that we perceived in our performance. That, um, and we kind of have this feeling like, oh, I just didn't quite give a true account of myself. My kind of, my vision wasn't, people couldn't get completely immersed in that because the sound was off or I made this little mistake or but it really makes no difference to be honest like um whether the performance goes terribly or perfectly 99% of what you're about is still like transmitted to the audience and if you just don't apologize it's like you're just put you'll put people at more at ease the audience and you're kind of just putting your music out there standing by it it doesn't really show humility to be making little excuses and drawing attention to your flaws that most people aren't completely unaware of anyway um it almost is the opposite it's almost like you're denying the audience their own their own judgment you know that like grant them the power to be their own judge rather than undermining you know like so if if you play a song and you think it does go well but everyone's applauding like accept that it's like accepting um accepting like a, a compliment gracefully it's a similar thing and i've never been good at that but trying to be better where it's like if someone pays you a compliment especially in, in this context like they're t afterwards they're telling you oh, i really like that song and you're just like oh no it's bad it just went badly then it, you're kind of it's very dismissive of of them and you know why when you pay someone a compliment what are you trying to achieve from that like you just want the person you're paying the com compliment to to just feel good about it just to get a little bump of like a little little glow from it um so just you know when people are applauding just take it accept it gracefully and move on don't apologize next up is to record your set in some way now that's not about getting like a really good quality recording for posterity or anything it, um so you know like it doesn't matter what device you use it can just be your iphone it doesn't matter the position in the room it this is just about getting like anything, any kind of recording so that the next day or whenever you can evaluate your performance objectively in the cold light of day when you know, you're not in the throes of the passion of like, and the stress <laughs> of the performance. Um, it's sometimes it's the only way, listening back like that is the only way for you to like truly recognize, okay, I play all my songs too fast when the, when the lights are on, you know, um, or my mic control is poor you know my where my voice is in relation to the mic like i'm not paying enough attention to that because i'm paying so much attention to the guitar or something like that um or that the audience applause was just like very cursory and polite rather than like sincerely joyful uh which is just a clear indication that you're just not good yet so gather some data in the form of any kind of recording just so you can analyze your material and its effect um and then you can figure out how to improve. Learn from everyone. Now, your favorite local performers, they're gonna become your close friends in no time at all and like your collaborators and your, your bandmates. Um, they're gonna be based, they're, they're likely to become your biggest inspiration in your musical journey, even more than your heroes. And you'll be their most staunch advocate and they will be yours as well. Um, but, there will be plenty to glean from all those people at the other end of the spectrum that make you wanna like run from the room, clawing at your ears. Reframe the moment of their performance, these people that you're not so into. Uh, reframe it not as like entertainment, but just as research. They're telling you, they're teaching you what not to do, if nothing else. It's all valuable. Next up, what to say now, what do you say when you hit the stage or between your songs? This is, the, for me, the hardest part of the whole equation. It always has been. 
um, it's it's public speaking basically, and it? it's like my worst nightmare. There's something way more like exposing um, to have to talk naturally as myself to a room full of people, way more so than playing them a song, even if that's a, like a really emotionally fraught like personal song. Um, I don't know why. I guess a song is always like a construct in some level. It's like an artifice. But speaking off the cuff into stage lights, like, ugh. But if you're like me in that regard, like, don't worry, it's a very simple rule of thumb. Just say your name, and between the songs, just say the name of the next song. Just say it into the microphone, and say it clearly, and that's it. If you can do that, you do better, you've done better than most people at open mics, such oh, sorry, blah. So just, that's all you have to do. Next up, know the songs. Now, some people will tell you it's fine to have like a music stand. You know, you see a lot of uh, open mics, you know, it's a music stand, there's often a house music stand so that people can put their notebook or their iPad or whatever on there so they can refer to the lyrics or, and yeah, an open mic is a place to try out new, new material. But I don't think it is all right to do that, to be honest. Like, I just don't think it really works because like, if you don't even know the, know the song inside out, then you can't really deliver it. You can't really like live through it and kind of pour it out into the room. Like, don't let me talk you out of ever playing. We can't get in a situation where we're always waiting for some impossible day when you're, when you're just like fully formed and, and you're gonna take the world by storm overnight. That's, that's not gonna, that's, totally impossible basically you're gonna have to cut your teeth and make mistakes and all this sort of stuff i'm just saying if you don't even know the lyrics it's just not ready just practice a bit more and then do it next week instead okay the next one is get there early and stick around like it's just about logistics making sure you get there in time to get your name on a list or you know to pay, different like mics are running different ways and some some will be super busy and you will have to get there early and talk to the host to get your slot but um it's also just about respect for that organizer and for the other performers um and it's about just maximizing opportunity really being there like you can't there, there'll be little moments of inspiration or chance encounters or little little thing little opportunities that come your way if you're at open mics a lot but that they'll never come your way if you're not there you have to be in the building you have to be there to catch any of these things and the host can't just can't physically can't accommodate everyone if if we're all just rocking up whenever we want fashionably late um it's impossible to keep the night flowing and and fit everyone in so just get there early settle into the environment buy a drink so the venue can survive to host another open mic um meet your fellow performers good like gig etiquette and professionalism like this just goes a long way to how you make your own luck in this game. Here's one, the Jack Lee nod. The, the, I'll finish playing. Just gonna look over at the sound technician before I pull that Jack lead out. You know, you might, you might be desperate to sprint off the stage in shame or dive off the stage into your adoring fans. But just take that little moment for the, the Jack lead nod because um, the venue's equipment and the audience's eardrums will thank you for it. Now, add variety to your set. This one, I've lost count of the number of times I've seen someone get up at a night like this and play their first song and, I, and I've really liked it and I've really been oh, this is interesting, like this person's got something. Then the second song is like almost exactly the same and you're like, oh, okay. And then the third song comes along and it's almost exactly the same and already by that third song, you're kind of like checked out a little bit. You're kind, you kind of write them off a little bit as, too one-dimensional. The magic spell is very much broken then if once you realize that they've got a very uh, a very specific formula that all their stuff follows. So you just have to find a way to get some variety into your set. Um, doesn't mean doing necessarily wildly different genres or anything like that but you know various things that you can mix up. Tunings, key, time signatures, topic, mood, Variety. Okay, don't sweat your tone. 
don't worry about tone chasing, okay? This is like um, an epidemic in the modern world with all the information we've got and stuff and things like this, YouTube. Like you just spend so much time kind of thinking about your equipment and your gear and, and like, well, obviously sound is the medium a musician works in. So it makes sense to give some thought and effort to your sonic palette and to, you know, th that makes total sense, sure, to a degree, but really the ratio of like thinking about that stuff to writing and practicing and playing and performing should be like 99 to one. 99 times more playing your music than thinking about guitar or pedal or anything like that. Have you ever heard of gas, gear acquisition syndrome? Like we're the worst at that, I think musicians now. We've got, we've just become like uber shoppers. We're, we're confusing shopping with creativity. So don't do that. And especially, I mean, generally I think that's good advice. Don't, don't sweat your gear too much, but especially in the context of open mic, um, because logistically you want to just keep it simple. You want to take as little stuff as possible. You don't want to be like stressing about some expensive guitar or something in a, it can be a bit chaotic and open mic. It's kind of like stretch resources at an open mic and organic flux and maybe people borrowing each other's equipment sometimes. And um, so, you know, I have had periods when my solo gigging rig kind of got a bit complicated with synth and drum machine and loopers and vocal processing and percussion and stuff like that. It was definitely overkill for open mics. You just need a guitar and a tuner, any guitar, any guitar. Don't worry about it. Um, no one's, people aren't gonna be like snobbish about it and kind of, you're not gonna look silly because you got a cheap guitar or whatever. Open mics are just about intimacy and like immediacy. It's your song and the audience with nothing standing in between. So don't worry about tone chasing. Go in it alone. Consider not taking your friends and family along with you, especially if you don't think that they're gonna kind of pay everyone else the same amount of attention as they will you and be and respectfully listen to everyone. Because, I mean, open mics are often almost exclusively attended by fellow performers. Um, but that's fine, that's a good thing really. That's, that's, that's one of the things that's quite cool about open mics is you're like engaging with new people, your new comrades, and you're not locked into your usual social bubble where it can be a bit constraining, can't it? Like doing something, especially something stressful and out of your comfort zone um, as playing a gig. It might be inconsistent with your your identity up to that point to how, how people see you. And I don't know, just in subtle ways, you're kind of boxed in a little bit sometimes. If, just go, go in it alone is like a rite of passage, going to, rocking up to an open mic alone. And the, you just find that you'll meet people and talk to other people much more and you'll probably get more out of it, to be honest. So you don't need to try and cajole all your friends to come along with you. I know you might want to for support, but, you're, but open mics are generally really supportive environments. People are nice. Practice setting up, literally practice setting up like it's part of your performance. Like have, have all your gear packed up that you're gonna take with you. Just walk into a room with it, plug it in and start to play your set and then, and then put it all away again and get out of the room as quickly and seamlessly and smoothly as you possibly can. Like that sounds really silly, but they're so, you're so pushed for time in most open mics, you know, for everyone to get a good stab and to get like at least two songs and not be there till three in the morning, you, the thing has to be rolling, you know, you, you can't, so you, you want things to be just, you want to be on autopilot when, when it comes to that stuff, just the mechanics of setting up on stage and getting back off, off the stage. Cause you want all of your mental resources to go into the, the arty bit. This one I'm gonna call Shout Quietly. Uh, this is like my number one <laughs> counterintuitive open mic hack. Uh, and that is, if it's a loud environment and people are chatting too much and stuff, play your quietest song, which takes some guts to do, because you're gonna to wanna to play your loudest thing and drown people out. But that, that's the 
approach that everyone out generally has and it doesn't work it just makes the noise level in the room just rise and rise um just play a hushed plaintive song a quiet delicate song you'll be amazed how much the room sort of self-regulates and quietens down and leans into your performance it worked it's worked for me like nearly every time which is really never think you never think it will but just think oh well they're not listening anyway i'll try it it just always works so give that a go Obey the format. If the house rules is you just only get two songs, then do not, don't try and just sneak in a third one. You'd be amazed. I've seen so many people do it, just kind of segue into another song or just trying to soak up the limelight. Like maybe they traveled a long way to get there or did bring a load of friends with them or something and they just feel like they're owed a little bit more time on stage. But that's just screwing over everyone else that's yet to play. And the, you really only need two songs anyway. That is enough for everyone to know what you're about and to know whether you're good or not and to have enjoyed it or not and leave people wanting more. Get comfy with a microphone. I know I was talking about how you want to be as quick on and off the stage as possible, but don't rush the setting up the microphone bit too much because you want to be singing um, in a posture that is natural to sing in, not a posture that's dictated by where the position of the microphone. And you especially don't want the mid-song droop. Like that happens a lot, like a poorly tightened boom arm that just starts to droop away and away and away. And you're in your middle of your like song and it's going great and everyone's on board and it's like heartfelt, but the mic's just creeping away and you're kind of like contorting yourself around. That's a bit of a nightmare. So take, so if you're not, if you're inexperienced, then you you won't feel comfortable with a mic and with a mic stand and, and adjusting it and stuff. Um, so you might have to fumble about and feel like a bit of an idiot for a minute while you do that, or ask for help from you know sound technician or whoever. Um, but it's worth taking. That's something that is definitely worth taking the time to do. And don't worry if you think you look a bit silly while you're doing it. You don't. You look. You might look a bit silly if you don't do it, and you do get the microphone dr drifting away from you during the song. Okay, here's a key one. Be supportive. Be compassionate. Be encouraging towards everyone. Um, personally, my taste in music, my taste in all art forms really, I'm like ridiculously s snobby and critical. Like I just, if there's a new Netflix series that the whole world seems to be obsessed with at the moment, you can pretty much count on me to just think it's absolute garbage i'm just insufferable like that i'm really, it's like, i wish i wasn't like that i wish i just liked everything um life would be great wouldn't it you go in the supermarket and they're playing a song you like oh that'd be that'd be wonderful but anyway i'm not and so for that reason at your average open mic i'm probably not going to be that into most of the other acts but i will still listen to them attentively and i will clap and i will try and think of like pick out little things that I like that I can compliment them on if I end up chatting with them later on and not because I'm full of shit hopefully but just because I have the basic like empathy to recognize um, how much courage it takes to stand up and communicate something meaningful um, you know maybe us performers are just narcissists but I prefer to believe that when we're performing we are it's it's an open-hearted act. It's a gesture of, it's, a, it's unironic communication. So give everyone a thumbs up for effort at least. And this, and by the way, like, I don't even need to say this one. Most, most people are nice and supportive at open mics naturally. You will more than likely feel the love from the room, no matter what your level is and, you know. That's one of the beautiful things about them. And finally, keep trying. You have to cultivate a healthy and robust capacity for embarrassment to do this and most creative things. You know, to, you can't curate everything the way you do your Instagram account where everything's perfectly just exactly what you want to present. You know, you're going you're gonna to have to put yourself out there. You're going to be vulnerable to failing publicly. You will fail publicly. Um, Beckett said, fail, Beckett said, try again, fail again, fail better. So there you go. 
there's my tips and advice for open mic gigs. Um, if you also have some open mic experience, then please do comment your own little bits of advice below. Um, especially if you disagree with anything I've said, like by all means, do not allow me to lead newbies astray with my stupid <laughs> uh, bits, uh, strong opinions. Um, and likewise, if you're an open mic virgin, like, and you never, you never played before, and there's something in, you know, it's playing on your mind that I haven't addressed here, um, please do comment below because I might be able to help you out, or someone else might be able to um, help you out. We all want you to play an open mic. We want to hear what you've got. So yeah, get involved. Um, and with that, I bid you adieu. Like if you like it. Don't if you don't. Subscribe for good vibes. Leave comments below. Cheers.